Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to follow the course of the popliteal artery as it exits the inferior angle of the popliteal fossa and then see some of the major branches that come off of it. Now, I will preface this video by saying we're going to be looking at this image right here. Uh, there's going to be one minor difference, in particular with the tibial perineal trunk. Um, some sources will actually uh, name this a little bit differently. So we will begin with this right here, but I will show you at the end of the video um, how some sources will actually name this a little bit differently, although most everything else is the same. So we've got our popliteal artery, and this is of course going to be the artery that runs down the popliteal fossa, which exists on the posterior aspect of the knee. Okay. So let's find the slide very quickly on the popliteal fossa. So the fossa right here is this space right here, kind of kite or diamond shaped on the posterior part of the knee. And we see its boundaries, and we covered those in previous videos. Now the inferior angle of the popliteal fossa is really formed by the two heads, that is medial and lateral heads, of the gastrocnemius muscle. And so the popliteal artery is going to be descending down the popliteal fossa distally, and really once it gets to the inferior angle of the popliteal fossa, that's where it exits into the posterior thigh. Now the way I have this divided up is the pink part over here on the left is the posterior leg, blue over here on the right is the anterior leg, and this is actually going to come into play a little bit later. Okay. So the popliteal artery is going to move out of the popliteal fossa through the inferior angle. And when it does, it's going to very quickly give off a branch. Okay? So it's going to give off a branch, and that branch is the anterior tibial artery. Now we have a problem here, because this is anterior tibial, but we're in the posterior leg. So it turns out that the anterior tibial artery is actually going to very quickly, after it branches off here, it's actually going to move through a hole in the interosseous membrane between the tibia and the fibula, and that's going to allow it to cross over to the anterior side of the leg. And that's where the anterior tibial artery is going to remain as it pretty much moves down the leg. And we'll come back to the anterior tibial artery in a few minutes. Now, when the popliteal artery enters the posterior leg, like I mentioned, it's going to quickly give off the anterior tibial artery as a branch, but when it gives off this branch, it changes names to the tibioperineal trunk. Okay? And we'll take a look at what this looks like on a real leg in just a minute. But when the anterior tibial artery branches off, it becomes the tibioperineal trunk. Now, the tibioperineal trunk is very short-lived, meaning it's a short artery, because it's very quickly going to bifurcate. And it's going to bifurcate into two arteries. One is the posterior tibial artery, and the other is the perineal artery or fibular artery. Recall that perineal and fibular mean exactly the same thing. Okay? So again, this artery, tibioperineal trunk, bifurcates into these two. The posterior tibial artery and perineal arteries both remain on the posterior part of the leg, but the posterior tibial artery is going to be more medially placed. Um, and we know that because it's the posterior tibial artery. Recall that the tibia is the medial bone, so this one's going to be the more medial artery. The fibula is the lateral bone, so the perineal or fibular artery is going to be more on the lateral side, but still posterior. Okay. All right, so let's actually take a look at this picture right here to get a better understanding of what's going on. So here in this diamond-shaped region right here, we have the popliteal fossa. Um, up here is the superior angle of the popliteal fossa. So above this, this artery would actually be the femoral artery. But once it crosses through uh, the superior angle and enters the popliteal fossa, it becomes popliteal artery. So right here would actually be uh, this actually looks like biceps femoris, and over here, uh, this would actually be the semitendinosus and underlying semimembranosus. And that popliteal artery is going to descend distally here through the popliteal fossa, and it's going to exit via the inferior angle of the popliteal fossa, which would be approximately right here. Okay? Now remember, as soon as it enters the posterior thigh, meaning it crosses the inferior angle, it's going to give off a branch, and that branch is the anterior tibial artery. So notice here that right here where the red changes more or less to purple, 
we see this blue artery come off. That's the anterior tibial artery. Now you'll notice that it doesn't appear to be very long. Well, it actually is fairly long. It's just that most of it is actually going to be visible on the anterior side of the leg. Because remember, the anterior tibial artery is actually going to pass through the interosseous membrane. Uh, remember, that's a, a sheet of dense connective tissue that connects the tibia to the fibula. So it's going to pass through that, again, between the two bones, and emerge on the anterior side. Here's another view of this. So we have the popliteal artery right here descending down, and we can see right here it's going to give off the anterior tibial artery. Now there is no interosseous membrane shown here, but again, you can see that this anterior tibial artery would cross through that and then emerge on the anterior side of the leg. Okay? Now here's where things get a little bit different, okay? depending on the source you're looking at. Um, in the way I learned it, when the artery gives off the anterior tibial artery right here, it's going to continue for a little bit as something called the tibioperineal trunk. Okay? So back to this picture right here, we have our popliteal artery. It gives off this blue anterior tibial artery. And this segment right here, from the interface between the red and the purple, right down to this bifurcation, so this short segment right here, this is actually the tibioperineal trunk. In fact, if you Google tibioperineal trunk, you'll actually find a Wikipedia page on it where it actually shows or describes this short segment. So this would be the tibioperineal trunk. Now, if we go by that standard, you'll notice that the tibioperineal trunk is actually going to bifurcate. Okay? Um, so one of the branches is going to be the fibular artery here in yellow. Okay? The fibular artery, as we mentioned, is the lateral of these two uh, arteries in the bifurcation, and it's going to go along the lateral side of the leg and serve the lateral compartment, which would be the peroneal muscles. The other branch, which is a little bit larger, is the posterior tibial artery. Okay, which is going to go on the medial side of the leg, but still posterior. Okay? So again, after the anterior tibial artery branches off, we have the short segment that's the tibioperineal trunk, which then bifurcates into the posterior tibial artery and the fibular artery. And so what I just described to you in the pictorial form is exactly what I have here. Okay? The major difference that we're going to see, depending on the source you're looking at, is whether or not we consider the tibioperineal trunk a thing in the first place. Okay? So in what I just described to you, as soon as the popliteal artery enters the posterior leg, it's going to branch off the anterior tibial artery and continue as the tibioperineal trunk. And then we consider the tibioperineal trunk to bifurcate into these two arteries right here. The major difference in some sources is that when this artery branches and gives off the anterior tibial artery, instead of calling it the tibioperineal trunk, it'll just be directly called the posterior tibial artery. And so as the posterior tibial artery continues down, we wouldn't consider this a bifurcation right here. We would just say that the perineal artery branches off, and then this just continues as the posterior tibial artery. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's go back to this picture. So we have the popliteal artery right here, the anterior tibial artery branches off, and then instead of considering this short segment here as the tibioperineal trunk, it just is the posterior tibial artery. And so it's going to descend down and branch off to give the fibular artery in yellow, okay? But then the rest of this that just continues down the medial aspect of the posterior leg, uh, this would just be a continuation of the posterior tibial artery. So again, just default to whatever your course uses, but understand that these two things are identical. Okay? Here's another view of this right here, and this picture actually uses the second convention that we talked about. So here's our popliteal artery, and right here it gives off the anterior tibial artery. Okay? Now, uh, it's going to continue as the posterior tibial artery, or if you want to consider it, tibioperineal trunk. Now, again, either way, you're going to have a bifurcation, or at least a branch right here, where the lateral artery that goes more along the length of the fibula is the fibular or perineal artery, and then the slightly thicker one which goes along more medially is going to be uh, the posterior tibial artery. So whichever figure you're looking at, or whichever convention you use, um, hopefully I made that clear. 
Now, a few other things to talk about would be the anterior tibial artery. I mentioned we'd come back to that later on in the video. So again, remember, as the popliteal artery enters the posterior leg, it's going to quickly branch off and give this anterior tibial artery. Now, this anterior tibial artery, remember, needs to go to the anterior side of the leg. So it's going to cross through the interosseous membrane through a hole, or hiatus here, and emerge on the anterior side. Okay? And that's what's happening. It's going to go over to the anterior side. And it's really just going to continue down the anterior leg as the anterior tibial artery. And of course, it'll have some branches that serve certain muscles as it goes down here. Okay? But one thing I want to make clear is when this artery gets down to the foot, it changes names to dorsalis pedis artery. This literally means on the dorsal side of the foot. Pedis means foot, dorsal means on the dorsal or top side. Okay? So again, top of the foot. And the exact point where the anterior tibial artery becomes the dorsalis pedis artery is actually the tibiotalar joint. And this is a joint where the tibia articulates with the talus. Remember that the talus is one of the largest uh, tarsal bones in the foot. And so that joint is really where uh, the anterior tibial artery just changes names and becomes dorsalis pedis artery. And this artery, of course, would serve some of the structures like muscles on the dorsal side of the foot. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. One last thing I wanted to come back to is this branch of the anterior tibial artery called the circumflex fibular artery or circumflex perineal artery. Okay, this artery is actually going to come off of the anterior tibial artery, and it's going to do so before the anterior tibial artery crosses through the interosseous membrane to the anterior side. Okay? So let me actually give you a picture where you can visualize this. Here's our popliteal artery descending down, and then it's going to exit the popliteal fossa and give off the anterior tibial artery. Okay? Now, this one that comes off here and kind of is going to move around the neck of the fibula right here, this is the circumflex fibular artery. Okay? Um, this artery is going to move around the fibula, as you can see here, and it's going to serve some of the structures that are closer to the knee. We're not going to go into much detail on that here. Now, some sources will say that this comes off of the anterior tibial artery, and you can make that case right here just looking at it. Other sources will actually say that it comes off of the posterior tibial artery. Again, there's a discrepancy there with a lot of the sources. Um, the way I learned it was that it comes off of the anterior tibial artery. Okay? But again, it's going to circumflex around the neck of the fibula right here on the proximal side and serve some structures near the knee. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of how the popliteal artery moves into the posterior leg and some of the major branches that we see there. And also help you differentiate between some of the discrepancies you might see based on the naming. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.